This is part two of the uh, introduction to Regression Plus for real estate professionals. And where we were, well, we were getting ready to enter the subject information. Now, I went ahead and entered that while I was in between the uh, recording of this. The property age is 12 that we want to use, 1500 for the gross living area. The main, uh, 1462, two bedrooms. We're in the west area and the day since sale is zero. Now, you can set the rounding, like this is how it would display right now. You can just set it to uh, different levels of rounding. You can also set it to be just uh, decimals for capitalization uh, rates and uh, anything that's just decimals, and you can turn off then the uh, the currency format so that it, the decimals will look right. The um, also you could do, uh, of course, uh, you know, for example, rent per square foot will work in this. Now you can add factors. I added one up here, remodeled, uh, and I've added ten thousand. I know it's really twelve years old, so there's probably really no remodeling. But we'll put that in because this will add this into the end. Sometimes there's something about your subject that you know you, that the model does not really does not really influence. So now we set up our subject information. Now let's go ahead and let's look at what we're looking at for the regression analysis. First, we're looking at our chart, and our chart uh, it uh, it is plotted the. Uh, error between the uh, sales the uh, the sales price and the predicted models price and for example the model was 23.5 percent off for this one but the ones that are right on this line the model predicted exactly for them so this kind of shows you your disbursement then we have uh, the number of observations for us uh, we have the R squared and the adjusted R squared and we have the MMP rating, which is the Market Model Predictability uh, rating, and that is very similar to the coefficient of disbursement, the COD, but this is a little more conservative. Uh, that's because residential appraisers typically have from 30 to 50 sales, uh, unlike some other uh, uh, fields of work where you might typically have hundreds of records. Of course, here's the value it predicts. Then it gives you a screen showing all of your independent variables, and it shows your, uh, there's your variables there. This is the ones that we're going to use or not use. Uh, if you don't want to use it, it's very easy just to turn it off, and we don't, we're not, uh, our analysis runs without considering property age. So this allows you to be able to run uh, the various types of, of uh, step-wise, uh, or what some people call reverse step-wise, where you you know, you can turn everything off except except the gross living area and then start adding back, however you want to do it. So we'll uh, just leave it like this for now. Now the value, of course, is what the model's returning for each of these, the output for each of the uh, variables. The weight is, um, this shows the weight that, that the particular uh, variable, like property age, 27% of the subject's value was determined by property age, <clears throat> which that's probably a little bit high. The subject deviation is the, that shows the, um, that shows how the subject data for each individual characteristic relates to the, the data sample. For example, it would be best if the subject was the average of the property ages and the average of the gross living areas, but that's, that seldom happens. So red means that the uh, subject value is actually outside of the uh, range of value. Yellow means it's not near the average, but it's not outside. Green means it's, 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 you know, it's pretty good. It's, it's in the ballpark of, in the average area. The P factors, um, it's color coded as well with the thresholds uh, programmed in. Green means good. You could have yellow here, which means acceptable, and red means be careful. So this is what we're looking at on the screen. And then uh, these completely, like I say, you can just turn one off or turn it on. Um, then uh, we are, uh, you can also, um, 
you know, order these in different orders by which one you put to, to get a feel of what you're looking at. So let's stop now, again for the sake of file size on this, let's stop now with part two and we're going to be ready to come back and kind of run a regression. Okay, so we will stop right now on this and, uh, and then you can watch the third and last part.